let's move to zeros so zeros so at a zero frequency what will happen to the transfer function i mean the name says at zero frequency what will happen to the transfer function zero that's why it's called zero so which means i will say at a complex frequency zk my output in the laplace domain will be zero for a non zero input right that is important right i'm rewriting the obvious and uh, one thing to always remember is the zero location highly depends on where you apply the input and what you define as the output okay we'll see it with an example but uh, something to have in mind so uh, now let's see what might be the origin for or how zeros might arise in your circuits so uh, one simple way in which you can have zeros this so let us say you have v out of s to be some v of s Now I want this to be equal to zero. What is the simple thing I can do here to make it zero? I have v of s. What is one simple operation I can do here to make this zero? Subtract. Multi. I mean, that is trivial. I mean, let's say I give you five chocolates. Hmm? You should have zero chocolates in your hand. What should happen? Or you give it to me, right? So I mean, it's plus v of s. So what should happen to make it zero? I mean, this is obvious. So this is one way in which you can have zero, wherein you have your output voltage obtained as sum of two different voltages, and the two different voltages will have different phase shifts. Okay. So this is one way. Another way is uh, you can have a case where you have two currents getting added with different phases, and that flows through an output impedance to generate a zero. Basically, if you have two currents. or two voltages or multiple voltages or multiple currents with different phase shifts getting added at some complex frequency it can give rise to a zero so again it might be clear if you look at examples so let us say i look at uh, this case let us say i define this as the output this as the input so here do you think the output is obtained as sum of two voltages this is the output is the output obtained as sum of two different voltages here no it is just one capacitor voltage but do you have a case where two different currents are getting added at the output yeah we have a capacitor current flowing through the capacitor current flowing through the resistor some of those two flow through the output impedance and these two currents will have different phase shifts because one is the capacitor current one is a resistive current so at some complex frequency these two can add up to zero so here you will have a zero now similarly let us say i take this case let us say i define this as the input this as the output so here do you think the output is obtained as sum of two different voltages yes it is the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across the capacitor once again these two voltages will have different phase shifts so at some complex frequency this sum can become zero hmm? now let us say i uh, re rechange my definition of output and say i'll call this as my output so here do you think the output is obtained as sum of two different voltages no uh, do i have a case where two different currents are getting added no so it means here do you think i'll have a zero no right so that's why i'm saying the uh, zero location depends strongly on the input and the output okay so uh, please remember this ha uh, so that's something how can there be a zero because the current is 90 yeah yeah i mean for, uh, zero i mean you you are saying talking about 90 degree 90 degree when you look at sinusoidal right we are looking at laplace domain correct Uh, it, we are, when you are saying 90 degree you are replacing s with j omega that will only give you a complex i mean uh, truly imaginary poles or truly imaginary zeros right but zeros can also be complex you can have a real part and an imaginary part i mean that that's why you use laplace transform 
right? Okay, so this, uh, yeah, so please remember uh, the zero depends on the input and output, okay? Uh, so that's about how zeros might come about in circuit, but there is a foolproof way to detect if we have zeros in your circuit. And I'll show that briefly and we'll uh, wrap up. So let's say I take a, take a th third order system, right? And I already have written the polynomial for the third order. I'll copy it. So this is the polynomial, denominator polynomial for a third order system, right? We have already written this. So now let's say I write the transfer function. Let us say the transfer function has one zero. If I have one zero, the numerator will have one plus an S term. Again, the S term will come due to which element? Due to capacitors. I have three capacitors, so I can have C1 times some Rx, C2 times some Ry, C3 times some Rz, fine. So let us say uh, in this transfer function or in this circuit, I tend C1 to infinity. So here if I tend C1 to infinity, in the numerator I have a C1 term that will dominate. So I'll have C1 times something. In the denominator, I'll have another C1 term. I can pull that out and that will dominate. So as I tend C1 to infinity, will this be zero or non-zero? Non-zero, okay. So I'll write that here. So I'll say that uh, my H of S is non-zero. And in this case, my H of S ironically has a zero. I have a zero here and this is what happened. And you can uh, repeat it for any capacitor, right? Even if you make C1, C2, C3, any of them to infinity, that's what will happen. Hmm? So now let us say I take a case where the transfer function does not have a zero. If the transfer function does not have a zero, how will this change? I will not have an S term, I will just simply strike it off for now. So now if I do the same experiment where I tend C1 to infinity, in the numerator what will I have? Nothing will be, yeah, only one will be there. In the de denominator I will have a C1 term. So what will this become? This will tend to 0, it's clear? So I will make the observation now. So uh, I contain any of the capacitors C1, C2 or C3 to infinity. I see that if the transfer function has no 0, this fellow becomes 0. Fine. Is, are these two observations clear? So based on these two observations, can you tell me a technique to detect if I uh, will have 0 or not? So the, the experiment we have done is this, I have taken let us say one capacitor <coughs> tended to infinity. I see that if the transfer function originally had a 0, when I tend a capacitor to infinity, the result becomes non-zero. Whereas if the transfer function does not have a 0 to start with, if I tend any capacitor to infinity, the result becomes 0. So based on these two observations, can you tell me a, a test to do to detect if I have a 0 or not? Correct? Yeah, that's what, right? So what you do is the following. You take one capacitor at a time in your circuit, make it infinity. If you make a capacitor infinity, do I make it open circuit or short circuit? That's what it means. You take one capacitor at a time, short circuit it, and see what is the output. If the output is non-zero, then you have a zero. Clear? So with this, you can find if we have one zero, right? So let's kind of generalize it. <coughs> Let us say now the transfer function has two zeros. So how will the numerator change? I will have an S square term and S square will come due to product of two capacitors. 
now can you extend this argument and tell me what test i should do to see to see if i have two zeros i take two capacitors at a time short both of them to zero i mean or sh short both of them simultaneously and see what is the output if the output is non zero then you have a zero similarly if you want to fi find if i have four zeros in a circuit take four capacitors in your circuit simultaneously short all of them and see what is the output if the output is non zero then you have four zeros simple again we look at an example so that it becomes clear so i'll take these two itself so here again uh, this is the input this is the output let's see if i have one zero for finding one zero i'll short one capacitor individually so let us say i short this capacitor is the output zero or non zero if i short this capacitor output is zero but i also have another capacitor if i short this is the output zero or non zero non zero so which means you have a zero here okay. now let's look at this fellow this is my output let us say i short this capacitor is the output zero or non zero so which means you have a zero whereas if we are defined this as your output you short this capacitor but the output will be zero so which means in this case do you have a zero no so that's about uh, this is a full proof way to detect if you have zeros or not but understanding the fact that zeros come due to multiple currents or multiple voltages getting added that gives you a physical intuition as to why you have zeros in your circuit so then i'll just do one last part and we'll wrap up so let's see how we can find the location of zeros now right and that's the most easiest thing you can do so here you know that you have a zero and you know that at zero frequency what can you say about vo of s at the zero frequency what is vo of v out of s zero i know v out of s is zero so use that information and just apply case here no no okay oh okay i okay maybe i'm not phrasing it correctly i meant at let us say a complex frequency zero i'm not meaning s equal to zero i mean at the zero frequency zk uh, i think that's a miscommunication on my part at zk zk is a location of your zero then v out of s is that's a definition of zero so then you apply case in linear circuit right so here what is the uh, let us say call it c1 r1 what is the current flowing through the capacitor in laplace domain the i of s times sc1 okay and what is the current flowing through the resistor a of s by r1 if i apply kcl this should be equal to what now i mean some of these two currents must be equal to this current what is this current zero i mean this is zero so it means zero current so now we can rewrite it it's v i of s into 1 plus s r1 c1 to be equal to 0 now i know for a fact that the input is non zero this fellow is non zero so which means only this has to be zero so that directly gives you the location of zero as let's see so finding zero is pretty trivial you resort to kcl kvl but use the additional information that the v out in the laplace domain is zero so similarly let's do this and wrap up so here again you can do the same v out of s is zero so uh, now i know that v out of s is sum of the two voltages so if i call it r1 c1 and r2 v out of s is the current flowing times r plus 1 by sc1 this is zero and what can you say about the current i of s yeah current is non zero because current is basically v in by r2 so this is non zero this has to become zero so which means you will get that the zero is at 
So that's how uh, we calculate the location of zero. So we'll stop here and we'll continue.